the Yellowstone Supervolcano, Cascadia Subduction Zone, New Madrid Seismic Zone are all connected by major cracks in the North America tectonic plate system. Recent findings show that the dangers are far worse than ever imagined. The eventual eruption will be gigantic and trigger a nuclear winter across the globe. The Ring of Fire The Mega Earthquake Generator The Pacific Coast and Yellowstone Caldera are in the Ring of Fire, where nearly all the mega earthquakes, magnitude 8 and 9, occur. The Ring of Fire is essentially a ring of subduction zones. Nearly all the earthquakes in the Pacific Arc are caused by continental plates getting stuck on oceanic plates, as North America is stuck on Juan de Fuca, a fragment of the ancient Farallon plate, and then getting abruptly unstuck. The Pacific Northwest sits squarely within the Ring of Fire. Off its coast, an oceanic plate is slipping beneath a continental one. Inland, the Cascade volcanoes mark the line where, far below, the Juan de Fuca plate is heating up and melting everything above it. This makes the Cascadian subduction zone the most seismically dangerous area in the United States. Recently scientists had reconstructed the 1700 earthquake, certain previously overlooked accounts also came to seem like clues. The Ghost Forest The Ghost Forest was created when the floor underneath the Redwood Forest dropped during the earthquake. The disaster is evident by noting that the trees are lifeless, leafless, branchless, barkless, looking and standing like stones. We now know that the Pacific Northwest has experienced 41 subduction zone earthquakes in the past 10,000 years. If you divide 10,000 by 41, you get 243, which is Cascadia's recurrence interval, the average amount of time that elapses between earthquakes. The denser oceanic plate is subducting beneath the less dense continental plate offshore of British Columbia, Washington, Oregon, and Northern California. The North American plate moves in a general southwest direction, overriding the oceanic plate. The Cascadia subduction zone is where the two plates meet. The Cascadia subduction zone Prior to the 1980s, the Cascadia was overlooked because it didn't seem to move or cause quakes. Cascadia Subduction Zone, CSZ, is far worse than the San Andreas Fault Line. The CSZ can deliver the worst earthquake and tsunami in North America. FEMA is preparing for a magnitude 9.0 CSZ disaster. The program is called Cascadia Rising. FEMA has built many internment camps, complete with thousands of giant plastic coffins, and thousands of martial law signs. The simulations, models, of this mega-earthquake is utterly terrifying. This is because recent research shows that the Cascadia subduction zone and Andreas Fault are simultaneously locked, frozen. And when these tectonic plates slip past one another, the mega-earthquake and related tsunami is expected to immediately kill tens of thousands. Most of the west coast of the US and Canada is at risk from Vancouver all the way down to Los Angeles and beyond. Predicting Earthquakes Most of the states and cities within this region are woefully underprepared for a large earthquake. Scientists peg the odds at 1 in 3 for a quake within the next 50 years, and 1 in 10 for a really powerful one. The easiest way to predict quakes is to identify those places where quakes are likely to occur. This can be done from historic records, and from prehistoric geologic evidence. Once people know where quakes are likely, appropriate zoning codes for buildings can be enacted. Even if pattern predictions of earthquakes can be made to work, the predictions are unlikely to be precise enough to really tell us what we want. Knowing that a quake will occur sometime in the next few years, or even the next few days, does not allow us to get people out of old buildings, off bridges during the quake. The best hope for predictions within hours or minutes is to find premonitory events. As the stresses build toward failure, rocks may begin to crackle, groundwater may move around in the cracks so that water rises in some wells and falls in others, electric signals may be given off by the cracking rocks, animals may act strangely. 
the only reliable and proven earthquake predictions are all post predictions. The Yellowstone Caldera Yellowstone Caldera is twice the size as previously thought. An ancient, sunken tectonic broken plate acts like a lid on the magma, and thus, acts like a pressure cooker, putting the magma under great pressure. The ancient Farallon plate fragment, one to Fuca remnant, that continues to subduct under North America is most likely the real culprit in the megaquakes at Yellowstone. Over the last 16.5 million years, the hot spot under Yellowstone has fueled a string of supervolcanic eruptions. The most recent eruption around 640,000 years ago spewed enough debris to fill Lake Erie two times. Recent research shows that long before that, about 200 million years ago, the converging Pacific and North American plates began forcing a slab of ocean crust called the Farallon Plate. Prior explanations of Yellowstone's origins ignored this sunken plate, Yellowstone's most salient feature. Recent studies demonstrate that the ancient tectonic slab is the dominant player beneath North America, says Eugene Humphreys, a geophysicist at the University of Oregon. He further says the plume is really at the whim of the slab. Monitoring of seismic activity and ground deformation by the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory helps ensure public safety. The University of Utah seismograph stations detected more than 3,200 earthquakes in the park in 2010, the largest count since 1985. Authorities have misled people by saying Cascadia is safe because it's quiet. But this is not true. When plates are locked and don't slip to relieve pressure, the pressure builds up for a megathrust earthquake. Yellowstone has a stationary hotspot coming up from the core, similar to Hawaii. So, as the plate above moves, the volcanic activity, eruptions, follows a path. The Snake River Plain evidences millions of years of volcanic activity that took place as the North American continent moved over a relatively fixed magma source, or hotspot. The identification of a clear seismic image of a plume beneath Yellowstone is compelling evidence that the Miocene, the Miocene epoch or the system of rocks deposited during it, to recent volcanism associated with the Columbia Plateau, Oregon High Lava Plains, Snake River Plain, Northern Nevada Rift and Yellowstone Plateau represent a single magmatic system related to a mantle plume. The Yellowstone caldera is rising 3 inches per year. New pictures of Yellowstone's plume show the reservoir is about 80 kilometers long and 20 kilometers wide. I don't know of any other magma body that's been imaged that's that big, says Robert Smith, a geophysicist at the University of Utah. The Cascadia subduction zone is affected by tidal forces from the sun and moon. A recent finding concludes that the in and out tidal flows jar the Cascadia blocks, which will eventually cause a slip from its locked state. The connection between Cascadia subduction zone and Yellowstone. Water exists deep within the earth and plays a crucial role. Water under great pressure causes magma formation, melting rocks. Water is needed for them to exist. The chemical signature of microscopic entities. Phytoplankton, as they grow they absorb carbon-12, when plankton die the carbon-12 in them falls to the ocean. Sea water seeps into volcanoes, moving far inland hundreds of miles. And so, something remarkable is happening at the bottom of the ocean, the source of carbon-12. Only massive movements in the ocean floor, called subduction, could deposit such mixtures of ocean rock and plankton. Yellowstone can produce an extreme depth earthquake. Such extreme depth earthquakes cause the whole earth to ring like a bell. It can also shake the entire planet, as the planet expands and contracts. Scientists previously believed that such deep quakes could not occur. The Rocky Mountains In the south, an older mountain range was formed 300 million years ago, then eroded away. The rocks of that older range were reformed into the Rocky Mountains, which rose a second time. The Rocky Mountains took shape during an intense period of plate tectonic activity that resulted in much of the rugged landscape of the western North America. 
the Rocky Mountains were made with buckling of North America's tectonic plate. The rise and height of the mountain range indicates how much pressure is involved. The Rocky Mountains, however are hundreds of miles farther inland, quite unusual. How did this orogena form so far from the subduction zone? The answer is complex, but appears to lie in the unusual nature of the subducting slab. The Wyoming Craton is a deformed craton in the west central United States and western Canada, Montana, Wyoming, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Utah. It is the initial core of the continental crust of North America. Recent activity at Yellowstone and elsewhere. Swarm of earthquakes shakes Yellowstone. Much of seismicity in Yellowstone occurs as swarms. Temblers from the three quake swarms mostly hit in three areas, Lewis Lake, the Lower Geyser Basin and the northwest part of Norris Geyser Basin. The Beehive Geyser erupts in Yellowstone National Park, which sits above a far bigger magma reservoir than was previously thought. A total of 130 earthquakes of magnitude 0.6 to 3.6 have occurred in these three areas, however, most have occurred in the Lower Geyser Basin. This is somewhat unusual activity at Yellowstone. Experts say a new major eruption of Yellowstone could be about 2,000 times as powerful as Washington's Mount St. Helens 1980 eruption. A major eruption of Yellowstone could devastate the northwest of the U.S. and make about two-thirds of the country uninhabitable. Respected geophysicists appear to have substantiated conspiracy theory speculation by asserting the world is experiencing potentially catastrophic spike in global seismic activity that raises legitimate concerns that renewed activity at Yellowstone could be sign of an imminent eruption. A nearby river spews out sulfur and bubbles up, roads running through Yellowstone have melted, bison have been observed running amok, and old faithful cycles have been drastically altered and shows high levels of arsenic. Further, North America is literally cracking up. A 1,700-mile crack has appeared that runs through the New Madrid seismic zone. The University of Utah called the magma reservoir under Yellowstone National Park, one of the planet's biggest time bombs. They noted that the chances of a catastrophic eruption at this time are small, but when it does blow, it probably will change the world. They predicted that the effects of an eruption would dwarf any natural disaster to date, similar to nuclear winter, but on a much greater scale. The study noted that, these types of events have been known to touch off ice ages.